Okay, while we're here working on this Jeep, talking about hull effects and checking them, doing bypass testing, voltmeter checks, scope tests, I wanted to do the cam sensor too. So I'm, I'm on the cam sensor now. I'm not going to show you the power and ground. We're going to focus on the signal wire. On this 97 Jeep, it's gray, it's gray with a black tracer. In fact, if you look at the other two wire colors, the white, black, and the, and the black with a blue tracer, those are the power and grounds. Those are shared. Same power and ground as the crank sensor that's on the cam sensor. So we're just going to focus on the signal. And uh, what I'm connecting is connecting up my scope and my voltmeter. I'll show you both again. We'll get an average voltage reading, show you what the waveform looks like on a scope. So I got two leads hooked up. Again, scope leads, voltmeter leads, they are going or referenced to battery ground. Okay? So let's look at the signal. All right, so we're going to take a look at these signals. Again, this is the cam sensor. Uh, this is the one that's located inside the distributor. Some people call it a pickup coil. Uh, it's truthfully not a pickup coil on this design. The crank sensor's on the bell housing uh, uh, and the cam sensor's inside the distributor. Uh, call it what you want. It's a cam sensor on this car. So um, go ahead and uh, wait one sec. Let me take this SD relay out. I don't want the car to start. We're going to simulate a no start. And uh, go ahead and crank it. Let's take a look at our average reading to the left on the voltmeter, and we'll look at the scope at the same time to the right. Yeah, go ahead. Hold on one second. Let me uh, get off of this auto range here. I hate auto ranging meters. And let me change my time base here a little bit. We'll go two seconds. Okay, go ahead and crank it. What do you notice on this test? Okay, good. What you noticed on this test? Was we actually saw the high low signal, didn't we? on both the scope and the voltmeter. Why is that? Why did we see the high-low voltage on the scope and on the voltmeter is because this signal is a very low frequency signal as opposed to the crank sensor which is a much higher frequency signal this one is only one pulse per crank rotation sorry one pulse per distributor rotation which is one pulse for every two crankshaft rotations is that giving my digital voltmeter enough time to take an updated sample of that signal? And so with low frequency switches, you can actually pick it up on a digital voltmeter. You saw it on the scope, you saw it on a digital voltmeter. The differences between a high frequency and low frequency signal, pretty evident here. So that's your cam sensor test. You can do the same thing with a bypass test, which I'm gonna show you now. The difference is we're not going to hear anything. You're not going to hear relays clicking and things turning on and off. I'll show you. It's a very easy procedure. Again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug the sensor, measure the harness side voltage. You can look at both the scope and the, and the voltmeter. Is the key on? All right. Key is on. Sensor's unplugged. What do we see? Five volts, right? So what design is the circuit? It's a five volt pull down design circuit. And to do a bypass test, again, you're gonna take a test light, it's battery negative, and you're gonna to touch on and off this wire. And we're gonna watch the voltage drop. You see on the screen how I'm making a nice square wave with my test light. Uh, my digital voltmeter is not gonna show you that kind of update, but it's there. If I hold it there, the voltmeter will update. It shows you how slow a voltmeter is. Right? If I touch this on and off very rapidly, you're almost not seeing that on the voltmeter. Hold it to ground, give the voltmeter a chance to update, let it go, you're going to see that high-low signal. So that's a bypass test on this. I heard no reaction. How do you know if that circuit integrity is good? Truthfully, you know just simply that you have 5 volts here. But we can look for a reaction. So what we're going to do is go to the, go to the scanner. And we're just going to look at our cam count. That's, that's this one right here. And uh, you can see some activity on there from when I was, when I was doing the test. 
But watch that data pid while I'm touching this on and off, and it should update. It should change. You see we're counting now. That's me touching this wire on and off. I'm actually creating a camshaft signal, and what is the computer seeing? It's seeing the signal and it's updating. So what response are you looking for? In this case, we're not looking for RPM, we're not looking for relays to click, we're just simply looking for a data PID to change. The data PID changed, that tells you the wiring integrity is good, you can be confident to put a cam sensor in it if you had no activity at that point. All right, cam sensor, crank sensor, hull effects, pull down design, Chrysler, they're all like this, no difference. The only difference would be in the waveform signature itself, vehicle to vehicle, they're gonna have different characteristics. What you saw in this video, you don't want to apply these voltage readings across the board because they have different amounts of teeth in the reluctors for the crank and the cam for different vehicles, so your average numbers are gonna change. That's it.